This page was created to teach black history. Unfortunately, the American educational system was designed to exclude our real historical account, so we are here to dismantle it. It's time to enlighten those of us who have been kept in the dark. I too was a black man who didn't know enough about our own history, so I began to dig deeper and do my own research. I want people of all races and cultures to join together to learn our history as one. Here, I will share all of my findings. Please share and support Teaching Black History. The Story of Nat Turner Nat Turner was born into slavery on October 2nd, 1800 in Southampton County, Virginia an area with more blacks than whites. For most of his life, he was known as Nat, but after the 1831 rebellion, he was widely referred to as Nat Turner. Turner learned how to read and write at a young age. He was identified as having natural intelligence and quickness of apprehension surpassed by few. He grew up deeply religious and was often seen fasting, praying, or immersed in reading the stories of the Bible. He ran away at age 21 from Samuel Turner, his owner. He returned a month later after becoming delirious from hunger and receiving a vision which told him to return to the service of my earthly master. Turner often conducted services, preaching the Bible to his fellow slave people who dubbed him the prophet Turner garnered white followers such as Mr. T. Brantley, whom Turner was credited with having convinced to cease from his wickedness. By the spring of 1828, Turner was convinced that he was ordained for some great purpose in the hands of the Almighty. He was convinced that God had given him the task of slaying my enemies with their own weapons. Turner said, I communicated the great work laid out for me to do to four in whom I had the greatest confidence, his fellow slaves, Henry, Hark, Nelson, and Sam. In February, 1831, Turner claimed certain atmospheric conditions as a sign to begin preparations for a rebellion against slave owners. On February 12th, 1831, a solar eclipse was visible in Virginia. This was coincidentally Abraham Lincoln's 22nd birthday. Turner envisioned this as a black man's hand reaching over the sun. Turner originally planned to begin the rebellion on July 4th, Independence Day, 1831, but he had fallen ill. He began the rebellion on August 21st, with several trusted fellow slaves and ultimately gathered more than 70 enslaved free blacks, some of whom were on horseback. The rebels traveled from house to house, freeing slaves and killing all the white people whom they encountered. Muskets and firearms were too difficult to collect and would gather unwanted attention. So the rebels used knives, hatchets, axes, and blunt instruments. The rebellion did not discriminate by age or sex, and members killed white men, women, and children. Nat Turner confessed to killing only one person, Margaret Whitehead, whom he killed with a blow from a fence post. The group spared a few homes because Turner believed the poor white people thought no better of themselves than they did of Negroes. The black rebels killed approximately 60 white people before they were defeated by a white militia. Turner also thought that revolutionary violence would serve to awaken the attitudes of whites to the reality of the inherent brutality in slaveholding. Turner later said that he wanted to spread terror and alarm among whites. For retaliation within a day of the suppression of the rebellion, the local militia and three companies of artillery were joined by detachments of men from the USS Natchez and the USS Warren. They executed 56 black people 
the militias killed at least 100 more. An estimated 120 black people were killed, most of whom were not involved with rebellion. Rumors quickly spread among whites that the slave revolt was not limited to Southampton. Fears led to reports that armies of slaves were seen on highways and that they had burned and massacred white people and were marching on the state capitol. Such fear and alarm led to whites attacking blacks throughout the South with flimsy calls. The scene was described as the slaughter of many blacks without trial and under circumstances of great brutality. The white violence against the black people continued two weeks after the rebellion had been suppressed until General Epps ordered troops and white citizens to stop the killing. Blacks suspected of participating in the rebellion were beheaded by the militia and their severed heads were mounted on poles at crossroads as a grimsly form of intimidation. A section of Virginia State Route 658 remains labeled as Blackhead Sign Post Road in reference to these events. During the rebellion, Virginia legislators targeted free blacks with a colonization bill which allocated new funding to remove them and a police bill that denied free black trials by jury and made any free blacks convicted of a crime subject to sell into slavery and relocation. Turner eluded capture for six weeks. He was captured on October 30th. A white farmer named Benjamin Phelps discovered him hidden in a depression in the earth, created by a large fallen tree that was covered with fence rails. While waiting trial, Turner confessed his knowledge of the rebellion he was tried on November 5th, 1831, for conspiring to rebel and making insurrection. He was convicted and sentenced to death. He was asked if he regretted what he had done, and he responded, was Christ not crucified? He was hanged on November 11th in Jerusalem, Virginia. He was beheaded as an example to frighten other would-be rebels. <laughs>